so welcome to the workshop. Um, my name is Michelle. I am a systems designer by trade. I am not a programmer. So you will see some horrifically nasty brute force code. That is not the point. <laughs> I'm sure if you're going to be a programmer, you can, you can uh, improve the algorithm greatly because it is nasty and brute force. The point was more you know, let's go over some basics for how BVA works, some pitfalls in BVA, and actually build something that either you can use or you can actually hand off to other people because Excel is actually very powerful in that way. And that it's almost like its own tiny little engine. You can do a lot of cool stuff just in Excel without anything else. Um, so like everyone knows, it's a spreadsheet thing. You can make spreadsheets and type in numbers. Yay, and letters, that's great, but it can do so much more. So. With that alone, you can store data, all the data you could ever possibly need. Cool. Um, it has code capabilities. So first up, then let's also, well, I'll give you that later. Um, and what you don't think about either is that because it's a spreadsheet, when you start to do this, it also looks like graph paper. And once you have graph paper, you have visuals. And so you've got everything you need to basically create applications and even games. Um, the game that I'm working on, professionally at Oxide Games, I can't talk about it, but I have basically every single system in the game running in an Excel spreadsheet, including like a map generator that we then base all the algorithms and like the simulations on. And I can run it in Excel literally a thousand times, have it print out all the maps much faster than the game engine does. And then we can tweak it there and then bring it back. So Excel is not just for making accounting spreadsheets. You can do so much in it. Um, do you guys have the developer tab in your Excel open? Yes. Everyone good? Does anyone need instructions on how to get developer up? We're all good? Yes, we're all good? Okay, um, cool, then I won't need to go over that. And by the way, if you just have a question or something, just please unmute yourself and uh, speak up because I'm really bad at monitoring chats and I will not see it and I will just keep bothering. So if you have a question or a comment, please just blurt it out. And let me know if the window behind me starts to bug anyone, I can attempt to close it and block off the light because I, I, I realize it's kind of right back there. Cool. Um, so if you haven't done VBA before in uh, Excel, it's super duper easy to get to. You just go over to the developer tab and you can open up the code from there. Um, the Excel likes to store its stuff in modules, which is fine. You can make more modules. You can put them in one module. It doesn't matter. It's just for organization. You can do things like exporting it to other sheets, but I don't usually. Um, so what we're going to do is basically code up a thing to build a custom um, town generator for like say a D&D &D game of like a pen and paper RPG of your choice, doesn't matter. Um, your DM, you're tired of making all your maps by hand, they're annoying, you just need a little crap ass town quickly. You can basically have Excel make one for you very quickly and then even come back in and hand edit it. Like, oh, I actually wanted you know, another road to be here so I can just copy paste it over or like drag and all that stuff. Um, I'm not gonna do a lot of live coding in this one. I've pre-written everything. We'll do a couple of things. The last time I tried to do live coding, it just turned into watch Michelle debug things live and it was horrifically sad. So we're not gonna do that. Um, so the spreadsheet that you have from the uh, my drive has everything in it up and running. So I just wanna spend a couple of minutes first, I guess, talking about spreadsheet layout, especially if you're gonna be doing this kind of stuff for tools, um, for like a company, even for yourself. Um, think of it like an app, like really do approach it that way. And please just don't make sheets and sheets and sheets that just say like sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. And then you're like, if you hand that to someone else, they'll be like, the fuck is this? I don't know, I don't understand this. Um, I always like to start massive sheets with a table of contents, like a literally table of contents. And these are all buttons that then, navigate around um, the spreadsheet for you with even a back button. Because if you are handing this to someone else, it needs to be easy to use. And then if you come back to this in six months, you're like, what was I doing? Um, those are super easy to do if you've never kind of played with that before. Um, they, Excel does have actual built-in form control buttons. These things right here that you can drag onto the screen, they look like nice and clicky. Um, I don't actually like using those as much because I think they're ugly. And I like to make these things pretty if I'm going to be staring at it for three years of my life, five years of my life at a company. So I don't use those. These are shapes. They're just shapes. So you can make a button look like whatever you want and then color them however you want. Um, and if you're trying to edit them, you basically need to like right click on it, go to design mode, 
and then you can do all those crazy things. To assign any functionality to one of these things that is not a button, it's really easy. You just right click on it, assign macro. And these are basically names of subs on functions running in your, um, in your code. So you can, you can choose one that's already here. You can also make a new one. So in this case, it was the uh, go to constructor button. But if you wanted to make a new one, you would just literally type in like my new function and hit new. And then it would create a new function for you down there. Except this is not a function. Boy. Excellent. So I behoove you all to actually use buttons and navigation aids in your spreadsheets because it will make you make your lives a lot easier. Cool. One of the um, actually there are a couple stop opening that um, form controls and ActiveX controls that I do make every use of, and these things are godsends for user input. Because um, the last thing you want to do is build this nice, really massive code base in Excel that you then have to go hand out of the variables in the code. That sucks. Excel has all these you know, abilities here to store data, retrieve data, use them. Um, these are list boxes. I like those if you're going to do anything involving a single selection because it's very clear to the end user that you're picking a single thing. It's a little radio button. Um, they have really nice drop down combo box controls. Um, if you want to actually then have things like words and be able to like do typing and to type in the word and do the searching to find it. There are actual radials, free text entries, all these things here. Um, and they work just like the others. So let's see, let's do a, where's the list box? Which one do I want? Uh, I could do option button. Yeah, let's do one of these. That's fine. So you just click and drag to drop one in and it makes a little control. You can rename this part. You double click on it. It will actually auto create a sub for you, which is cool. If you actually want to edit it though, you need to right click and go to properties. And this is where all this stuff happens. Um, please, 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 please always name your form controls. Never, ever, ever leave them the default names because you. this is how you'll be referencing in a VBA. And checkbox one is meaningless. So you want to take some more like, you know, as walls. Hey, don't do that. So now you can actually reference has walls in your code and you'll know exactly what it is you're talking about. And these are a bunch of just different properties for managing what this thing looks like and how it behaves. Um, do -do -p. For list boxes, burp, burp, burp. the only other big thing you need to think about with these, oh, hello, admit. Yeah, okay. Um, is down here where it says list fill range. Um, this is where you store, you're pointing Excel to where all your data is stored. And you can, and in this case, it's going onto another sheet, other data. So it's just apostrophe, other data, apostrophe, exclamation point. And then you just type in the range. And also you should be using things like the um, direct address, you know, locks because otherwise it can move around and you will be a sad person. And that's all stored over here. All these things over here is where it's getting, getting its data from. Cool. So I think those are like all just the kind of basics for how to start building this stuff. And then, yes, yeah, just, you know, use cells to store data, use data validation as well. So, I mean, always think about if you're giving this to an end user, what could go wrong? Because people will make mistakes. So under the data field, data validation is your friend. Always, 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 if you're expecting a number, put in validation because people are going to type in random shit or negatives or things you didn't want. And this is just a very easy way to make sure that like this number is going to be between zero and 100, which is what the program expects. Um, so make sure you do stuff like that. Cool. So let's actually start looking at what this thing does. Any questions so far? You good? Cool. Yay. All right. So first up, so we have this idea of like, you know, we want to build a map. Um, and a map is like just a collection of some very simple data points. Where is my map? Cool. Print, print, print. Create map. You need to know how big it's going to be, um, like how many columns, how many rows. Those are a grid paper. We need to know what color it's going to be because it's going to be a grassy area. Is it going to be a rocky area? And we need to basically know what we're going to fill this with. And with all those points of data, we can actually start to draw this thing. Um, VBA is rather human readable. Um, it is a little weird though in how you have to set up some things. So subs are kind of like the main routines 
in VBA. There are also functions and those are a little bit different. Subs cannot return anything. Subs just run and they do a thing. If you need to return a variable or anything from it, you have to make a function instead. And I do that later down there just as an example. Um, you can just define subs directly in here. You can define them off of controls. Doesn't matter to define a new sub. You just literally type in sub, my name, whatever it is. And then you've got a new one. Huzzah. Comments are easy. They're right there. Um, if you want to make a new variable, you use dim, which is short for dimension. You're basically just declaring it. Um, you can, and then, you know, as integer, as whatever. So dim my thingy as, and then it would, should give you some nice, like, you know, this doesn't always work though, which is obnoxious, but pick it whatever you want. Singles are also good too. Um, Excel will let you start using variables without declaring them. Don't do that. Please don't do that. It's a terrible thing. The languages that may let you do that are a terrible thing. It will also let you declare variables as variants. Please don't do that either. That's a terrible thing. You always want to strongly type anything in here because Excel will just go with it. And then if you misspell shit, even as a variable, it's just like, cool, I'm like Lua. I'm going to do whatever I want. And then debugging that is going to make your life miserable. So always, always, always strongly type all your stuff up front. Um, the next kind of like major thing to do is how do you reference your worksheets? And that's just through direct... This is usually the easiest way. I know that means if you rename this, you have to go back and change it. You can make a variable for the for map and then use that instead. You can also do this and just reference the direct index, but then when you're reading this, you have no idea what the hell sheets one is. So, you know, personal preference, do what you can. Um, to once you have a sheet, you range is how you reference like a collection of cells in here. And you basically use the same, um, Where'd it go? No. Come back. Um, address moniker that you do just normally doing cell math. It's like D10 to MM400. And I'm just clearing everything up front. Um, this is how you declare normal variables in VBA. If you need to work with an object that's a bit more complicated, you have to set it. Um, you can't just say it equals. Like if you try to do this, like map table, and map table is an actual table equals something like this, it will fail and be upset with you. You have to use the keyword set for anything that is an object like tables. And tables are something you should be using as well. So this is a table. This is not a table. Um, to make a table, it's very easy. You just highlight the thing you want to be a table. Go to insert, say table. My table has headers. Yay. And again, rename your tables to something meaningful. Otherwise, this makes no sense. Building types table, because this is what you're going to be referencing in code to find it is this name right here. Um, tables are super duper powerful. Um, they let you do things like this. So data body range. There's also boop, boop, boop. type in a random thing. Like, oh, you're not going to do it. Oopsie, there we go. Helper text disappeared. Um, you can reference just the headers, you can do the data body range, and then start to reference it using cell range math. So there's kind of the two different ways to reference ranges. This is direct, we're actually telling it from here to here, and this is referencing row and column. And so this is when it gets really interesting. You can start to use variables here and walk through ranges and tables using variables, So which is basically what we're doing here. We're finding, um, we're basically doing lookups. Here, we're like, where's my map size? It was tiny. Find that row, one, two, three, four, and then head over to that column to get like the actual width that we're using, all those sorts of things. Cool. So we're gonna grab all the data for the map sizes. Yay. And then we're gonna actually draw it down because, you know, why not? Let's do that. So this is just basically mapping the boundaries to where it's going directly with the range. This is a keyword as well for checking if something is completely empty. You could check like, for a couple of different ways, but this is actually a little faster. Um, if then, else, these are your block, how you do it, don't forget the then, it'll die and be unhappy with you. And this is just then basically saying, hey, make sure that we have a border around here and not starting up at the very top because it looked ugly and I didn't like doing that, it was gross. So basically all this is doing is just flooding an area with a color. Make sense so far? We're all good, cool. Um, Roads, I figured every town needs a road, right? So subs and functions can take arguments. 
So to do that, you just basically, in parentheses like you would in other languages, type in what you want your arguments to be. When you then call that sub or function, you don't use parentheses or anything else. This is how you actually call it, and those are the variables. It's hateful and ugly, and it's kind of horrible, but just remember this is what you have to do. Um, so if you want to change the variable, just type in right there, and these are the different arguments, and just put a little comma in between them. Um, by val means you're going to be passing that argument by value. There's also by reference. Certain kinds of um, argument types require you to use by reference. So if you're going to start to use custom data types, like if you basically build a struct of custom data, you have to typically pass that by reference. Tables typically need to be passed by reference. Any large clunky object, Excel is going to pretty much make you pass by reference, but that's okay. Um, just as if you get a weird error and you're like, the hell is this talking about? That's usually what it is. Um, boop, boop. So again, tables must be set using the keyword set. Otherwise, you know, it's very easy. Um, this is where I start talking about my shitty ass brute force code. So it is just very dumbly going to start drawing lines down this stuff. Um, pretty straightforward. It's not doing anything interesting. Um, where's the thing I wanted to point out? Um, bup, bup. No. Ah, well. Um, Excel does have a couple of different kinds of loops. There's for loops. There are do while loops. There's a do loop until, which is what I'm using here. I try to use lots of different examples in here to show you guys some different ways of doing things, not because it was the right thing to do, just because then you had an example of it. Um, please be very careful doing anything with a do while loop because Excel's ability to break out of infinite loops is not good. Um, so you can lock up your computer if you're not very careful. You can sometimes recover by clicking literally control break on your keyboard and hoping for the best, but please be careful. Um, for loops are usually a little bit safer since they do typically end. Um, bup, bup. So another thing to remember is that when you're using random in Excel, it doesn't automatically reset the seed. You have to do that yourself, especially when we're calling random multiple times all at once. So to do that, you just literally type in randomize. That's the name of the function call. And then you can type in rand, which is then generate a random number from zero to one. Um, so remember to use that if you start getting like the same thing over and over and over again, it's because it hasn't reset the seed. So you'll need to do that yourself. Boop, boop. And then once you do the roads, we have to start figuring out buildings to place. And this is the most hateful, horrible code I've ever written in my life. Um, so what's cool about this kind of like, you know, treating Excel like graph paper is that it lets you draw in here. And then basically from there, you can lift and copy whole cells of data and drop them somewhere else, wherever you want. And that's what's happening in here. Um, so these are a whole bunch of building templates that are literally just drawn with borders and fills. And that's it. See, there's just special borders, border styles, border grid, line style. They get these cool little styles that kind of look like walls, um, different ones for like doors and stuff. So, this is kind of where all the data is laid out. And then here is where it's being stored. So here you can see small n starts at C3, ends at M13. It's like, okay, so C3 to M13. So this is basically telling Excel where to define this building. Um, you can do some fun things here to actually then get the size without having to count. Um, indirect is a super useful, cool function. Um, to use. It basically lets you dereference this and use it as an actual address instead of just like a little string thing, which is what this thing. So it's basically start here, end here, and then it will count basically the number of rows and the number of columns between these two points. Um, there is a corollary one called address that will then also basically give you the cell address itself. So between those two, you can do some fun moving things around just in the cells itself. Cool. So that's where all that data stored in this table here. And basically what how this works, it's a really junky loop table, a weighted loop table. So each one of these items is given a weight, like 130. A higher weight correlates to a higher chance to place because while um, percentages are great, every time you wanted to add a new 
line to this uh, table, if it was done in percentages, you'd have to recalculate the EBOT 100 and that's stupid. So placement weight, total current weight, and basically what it's doing is it's rolling a random number to find a building um, and then it starts in the weighting in the random numbers between basically zero and this total weight number. That's what this column's um, adding up. And it then starts to walk the table looking for where that number is here. So if, like if it rolled, say, um, like insert ran between, just do it here, zero and this thing, it'll spit out 503. Awesome. And so then what's going to start to do is walk down here. Is 503 less than this? No, keep going. Is 503 less than this? No, keep going. And so then once it got to here, is 503 less than 580? Yes, stop. Cool, I'm going to place down an armor shop. And so that's basically what it's doing to try to place all these things. So items with a much larger weight, like say if we did this, have an extremely high chance then of firing and landing here. But we don't want that. We don't want the blacksmiths everywhere. Cool. And this is just a placement you know, simple, just add everything up. Burp, 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 burp. Um, drawing buildings is literally just copy pasting. So once we have the building in our list and which one we want, we can use this table then to actually then grab the addresses, which is what it's doing um, over here in this function down here. Oh, I guess I should also mention here, um, if you guys were in Ben's talk about tweet carts earlier, he mentioned go to statements as something that you're always taught never to do. Um, VBA sometimes basically requires that you do them because its ability to break out of loops and to move out of um, code paths is really shitty. Um, and so it is based, it is horrifically common practice to use go to's to move around your code. Um, so again be careful and use please use good uh key phrasing for figuring out where you're going so basically um what this is doing is starting at the top it knows how big the building is now that it needs to place how many rows it is how many columns it is and it is brute force searching for a spot that meets that criteria um walking through it and then when it does it breaks out of that spot and then returns that i did find it yes which is why this is marked as a function and so to declare a function it's almost the same as a sub you just use function but then whatever you want it to uh, to return as boolean so this is going to spit out a boolean um, and the way to do that is you don't there's no return keyword you just basically set the function equal to the thing you want it to return which is a little weird um because like with this you can't just do like can it would be what you would expect to do in another language that won't work so you just literally say the name of the function itself find spot equals my variable and so then when this runs um, up here find spot building it will then return that variable here and store it in this variable so it's just a little weird thing to get used to doing um, and that's how functions work all good so far cool all right, so, and the only other major thing in here too is the name generator. And this is basically the same sort of idea. And this one we can mess with a little bit because um, this one's slightly less. Oh, I didn't do the print statement. Uh, and if you want to quickly get around your code, you can also use this to just jump directly to a function. Um, you can have Excel export out and print stuff automatically too, which is pretty cool. Just be careful again what you're doing. And you're not going to print out like a thousand files somewhere to like your hard drive because you'll be sad. Um, it's really ridiculously easy to print something out and have it save somewhere. So to get the path of anything you're working with, just active workbook keyword dot path will give you the entire path name for where this file is living on your hard drive. And so then it's very easy to then set up. Okay, so I want my new name to be the path of this thing and then add some extra crap like this to create a save name and this is how you print out to PDF. You can also export um, out as another spreadsheet as well. There aren't too many options, um, unfortunately, but PDFs can usually get what you need. It's cool. Oh, and message boxes. And so another thing, if you're ever building these kinds of like little fake tool application things, you usually want to tell the user what you're doing because Excel won't and then you're like, did it work? I don't know. So it's really easy to create message boxes for the user. Um, it's basically just this 
freeze like message valves um and you would type in like hey there i'm a message i can't spell oh my god um buttons you've got a couple of different options for as well um boop, here and this is basically saying what kind of buttons you want to allow on it and what kind of icons are on it and all these nifty nifty things so let's say it's critical because of course it's critical oh we don't need that um let's do uh, ba, 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 ba. we don't need that as optional we do however need buttons that's just an okay button. Cool. And this would basically print out the message box that said, hi, had an okay button, put a critical icon on it, and the title was called help. Of course, I'm just a quiet layer because that's, that's how I roll. Cool. There. Um, pretty straightforward then to do that. So just see if we print it out. This is the kind of message box it would then print. You could say, okay, so you know it did something. Um, you can also then very easily add those kinds of message boxes for debugging um, because you can add a watch to a variable pretty easily um, by just right clicking on it, add watch, okay, and it'll show up down here. But there is not much more in the way of debugging. Like you can do breakpoints by clicking over here, but that's about what you've got to work with. It's, it's not terrific. Cool. But all right, let's actually play with some of this stuff more. So cool. So when I first made this, I was like, yay, I can make a map, but I didn't make a names for it. And I was like, well, people can fill out their names. And the three DMs I had user test it were like, how dare you not create a random name generator for this? Because I'm a lazy DM and that is the worst thing ever. And I hate making names. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll random, we'll make some random names. Um, also pretty easy and straightforward. Again, it's the same idea if you're just dimensioning ranges, variables, and then setting tables equal to stuff. So you can then reference them. So we have prefix tables, syllable tables, and sublet tables. And list objects is just a fancy thing. So like all these controls are list objects, all tables are list objects. Um, God damn it, I've got too many windows open. Go away, go away, go away. All right. So this isn't doing too much fancy right now. It's basically just saying, hey, from this user generated data over here, um, and again, use colors to tell your users what they should or should not touch. You can actually lock um, whole ranges of cells. Like if you don't want them to touch this stuff at all, you can actually do that and lock it. Um, the problem with doing that then is that if you password protect it, like over here, you can protect um, basically the sheet or the workbook and not allow anyone to touch it except for certain areas. So that's cool. If you forget, the, if you forget the password, you're kind of boned. So use that only as a last um, ditch measure. I usually prefer just to do things with data validation and like simple color coding. It's like, Hey, just touch the orange cells. Don't touch these. These are auto calculated. Don't mess with them. And that's usually good enough. Um, cool. So what this is doing is basically saying based on these, you know, one syllable, prefix or suffix, all this kind of stuff. Um, we can probably make this a little bit better. We can try to do this live. It's usually terrible. Um, something to think about when you're doing things with random and user input is that Excel will auto calculate a lot of sheets on its own. Like every time you just click something, it's like, let's say if we, we get rid of this just to show you. Cool. And so now if we start to, oh no. Oh, I, I protected it better than I thought I did. Good. I must have done it in multiple places. Go me. Um, normally, it would auto-update, and like all those numbers would start flipping and changing, which is great when you're doing just simulations in the workbook itself. But then if you're actually trying to use those random numbers, the last thing you want is to have them changing constantly while you're still trying to reference them from the sheet. That's annoying. So to do that, um, to make that stop, application.calculation is what that's called. And there's basically these two things in it. Calculate. Well, that's if you want to do it manually. Um, equal Excel automatic or even semi-automatic. Um, if you want to actually then call it whenever you want, that will then make everything update. But for now, we actually just want to make it manual, which is then what we're doing here um, with this line, calculate. That's actually then telling Excel, run those random numbers and then stop. Don't do it ever again um, because we want to keep those the same once we start referencing them. 
cool. So we made a bunch of variables, we referenced our tables, we clear out our old names. Always remember to clear out your data because Excel will just overwrite them. And then if your data ranges are changing, the old data is still going to be around at the bottom and that's junky and you don't want to do that. So make sure you clear stuff. Clear contents is the keyword for clearing everything. It'll clear fonts, it'll clear patterns, backgrounds, literally all the things. So clear all the things. Um, and then this is just doing a very simple RAND um, lookup. So test name is just a little junk ass string we made. Randomize again, remember to reset your seed because the last thing I want is every time I run this for loop to have the same syllable and then you would have like bridge, bridge, bridge as your name and that's dumb, no one wants that. So randomize, get a new seed. And this is um, basically, if you're trying to do a random number um, between two that, because Rand will just return zero to one. So the basic formula for that is you do your Rand times max number, minus the min number, plus the min number. And that's your basic formula for doing any kind of random number between the, anything you want, which is what it's doing here. Um, so it's looking at the table, syllable table here. The data body range is then only these cells. It's ignoring the header, which is great, so we don't have to count for that. The rows, it's then counting them. So all this is pre-built into tables, which is why you should always use tables for everything you're doing. Um, something to remember is that as programmers, almost everyone is taught to start at zero whenever they're indexing, not in VBA. So many things start at one and it will fuck you up if you don't remember that. Like, why is my index out of range? It's probably because you started at zero and it is expecting things to start at one, um, for almost anything like these kinds of tables and list objects and index as, so like when you're trying to reference an index in here, remember they start at one not zero. So if you're getting a weird error about um, out of index, um, index errors, that's most likely the culprit. So just remember that. Um, and then yeah, once it gets a, a syllable, we then take that um, random number. So in this case, it could have returned like 49. And then we use that to go right back into the data body range. Again, using that concept of like, I, if I have a range or a table range, I can find anything I want by giving it the row and the column. So we then use that as our row. Our column is one, because there's only one. And then from there, we can retrieve the value in that cell. Um, remember that you can't just use this for the most part ever. If you're trying to then, um, for like for a variable, you have to actually manually grab the value out of there. And then we're just appending it directly there. So it is pretty straightforward. Um, yep. And then we set it back to automatic and, um, Basically, how we copy all of this over, we're not actually copying anything. So this button is a lie, but to the user, that's what it looks like it's doing. Um, and the reason why we're doing it in a kind of weird way is because I used a merge cell here because it looks prettier. Um, you should only ever merge cells, that's, that's over here, if you want to merge, um, for displaying data. It's really nice to sometimes in center stuff and make things look pretty, but it is a horrifically bad thing if you're ever trying to use that cell for data storage. It should only ever be used for display and your actual data should be stored somewhere else, which is kind of what we're doing here. Um, and so what it's doing is it's looking up um, the name based on this. So like you say, you really like Barn Gosbra, that's a great name. Let's let's do Tin Shepfield. That's our that's our town. Awesome. So we say, hey, we want to select number ten. Um, and then over here, what it's doing is it's looking up the array. So in this case, is our name array over here? This thing. Oh, get get out of there. Um, and then it wants an index over here for like what row to look up. Um, index is a super duper awesome thing because it's basically then returning the value found at that index. So it's a cool thing you can use. Tension fill, there it is. Because we couldn't actually copy this over via code because it is a merge cell. Normally you can just do a, um, a straight copy, like, you know, where is it? Where do I want to do this? Uh, let's say like, you know, she, Watch Michelle code live. It's the worst. Do, do, do. Like, let's say in 12, something like that. And you can literally copy stuff and then also 
paste special or paste um, if you just want to do a simple thing, but you can't do that. You basically can't copy data into a merge cell ever, which is why you need to be careful with them. So we don't do that. We're just basically saying, hey, when we hit this button, all it does is actually activate this sheet, sheet and bring it forward so it looks like it did the thing, but it didn't actually do anything. Um, I have been babbling for 40 minutes. Is there something in particular people had a question about with VBA or what they could do with it um, while I let this run and produce something absolutely horrific and because it's brute forcey terrible? Yes, no? No one has questions about anything? Problems they've had with VBA? No? VBA treats you well? You're, this is the first. <laughs> Everyone hates VBA. What are you talking? <laughs> People are silent. <laughs> la 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 la. Oh, great. So, yeah, one thing you you may want to do in terms of the uh, sheet names, mm -hmm. if you name them in the properties, yeah, and then you code it that way then if somebody changes the name of the sheet on the tab, it won't mess up the program. That's very true. Awesome, and it crashes. That's amazing. So I, this has been a bad day for me in technology. I also crashed this Discord this morning during my talk. Good times. Let's go back and open that again. <laughs> sigh. Sigh, sigh, sigh. Okay. We're back. All right. Yeah. Are you going to run this time? I'm not going to touch anything. Good God. Oh, I broke it. Oh, well. The one in the, uh, in the folder works, I promise. <laughs> it worked this morning. This is why I don't code live. It never works. God damn it. <laughs> okay. Try this again. Good Lord. Good Lord. So while I get this back up, does anyone else have anything they want to ask or point out or talk about? Nope. Back in recovery. I don't care about back in recovery. I don't want that crap. Yeah, so. Crash and kill every time I try to simulate with it. It what? Mine crashes as well every time. Really? So what happened? Let me um, let me revert. The one I uploaded yesterday definitely worked. Okay, can I go back? Manage versions. Let's delete that one. All right. Don't save. Open up this one instead. <laughs> Opening. Let's see. What did I know? Yes, enable editing. Yes, I know. No, I did not write a virus. Leave me alone. So far, so good. So far, so good. All right. So if you go back to the Google Drive, um, I got rid of the, I replaced the file with an earlier version of the file that should looks like it's working better. So I don't know what the hell I did to it between last night and tonight, but I did something bad. All right, then I will go back to doing this since it looks like it's happy now. Okay. <sighs> Are sharing it just broke everything? I might have. The worst. Oh well. Did I just lock my computer? No. Well, 
Bueno. Hello. Doesn't cling. Yeah, I think I broke it. Is that version working better for anybody? I'm trying to check it right now. Okay. What is open that it doesn't like? All right. Let's stop sharing that. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop. Close that. Open that. Let's do a very tiny one. Ugh. And I specifically went to my work computer. So I had like, so it was better than my laptop. Size. Oh well. I think that worked. Okay. Cool. I wonder what the hell I did between last night and tonight. And today, they broke it. Oh. Who knows? Not a programmer. Yeah. All right, cool. So, yeah, that version that's now in the drive functions. Um, cool. Yay. I did not give you bum code. Excellent. Cool. Um, so, I just printed out this horrifically ugly little dumbass town. Yay. Um, cool. Awesome. Nice, nice, nice. And so then on here, I just have some extra, like, you know, notes for things that could be done to make this better. This was definitely just like, you know, first pass. Um, the algorithm is kind of dumb. Um, I had actually marked off where doors were in this um, table, but then I didn't actually do anything with that information, with the idea of being like, oh, I could actually then draw a road from the road to the door, and that would be super cute but I didn't do that. Um, wouldn't be, shouldn't be too hard to do. But cool. All right. Um, let's adjust the activates to move the, the stuff around. Cool. So no one had any questions about anything or stuff they wanted to ask about or something that bugs them? Good. If you put if you put the weights to zero, would that exclude the buildings? Yes, it would. And that's that's exactly how you would do that. Is that you know if you built a table, like a list box over here, and said like I don't want temples or shrines, all you would have to do then is that's exactly right. Is if you do this, and have it set that, it'll never ever land there. Um, I do that actually a lot at the office for like, because we basically use loop tables like this too for a lot of stuff. And that would basically say these fields will never ever fire because it would always go to here first and then jump up there. Whee. We'd probably want to then store a default for them. The first one zero, would that, would it still, would it pick that up by accident? Um, if the first one is zero, you would want to actually then make your random numbers start at one, um, between one and this number, because then it, that would then get rid of that. Which, yeah. was I smart? Did I do that? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Ah, <laughs> uh, where did I do that? Find the building. Pick a building. I did not, it is starting from zero, yeah. So you would then want to change this to, let's see. Sorry, my man. So we want to do that. Minus one. That's one. So there, that would solve that problem. Yay! Because yeah, otherwise you, it would always return that. That would be a sad thing. Excellent. I'll save that. Um, yeah, so um, I know it was a lot of talking. I 
thought this might be a little bit better and actually give you useful things instead of last time when it was a lot of like horrible debuggy crap coding and then nothing actually happened or worked because it was all sad and broken. Um, but yeah, feel free to take this and mess with it and do whatever you want with it. Um, the basic idea of like being able to store things in tables, reference the data in those tables um, will let you do tons and tons and tons of things. Um, this whole idea of being able to basically color the backgrounds of cells will let you do tons and tons of different things visually. Um, it's basically how we use our map generator at the office to I think to get the module two. Another one. Sorry, enough. Um, and that was just using that special paste special function here. All this is is basically this, where it's copying those template cells and then pasting all. And so that that is grabbing the color and the borders. Um, one thing to keep in note, mind though, because of the way I did this, it's using borders border art to draw these lines. So you can't just grab these cells and transpose them to rotate because when you do that, it does this. Um, and it, all the borders are done fucked up. <laughs> so <laughs> let it work. <laughs> um, like, you know, the colors are exactly where you think they should be, but then all the borders are all messed up. So if you actually wanted to do something fancy with rotating, you could start this, but I think I haven't figured out a way yet to get the borders to rotate. Um, so just keep that in mind if you want, you want to spin these things around. So far, I've had to do it by hand and then fix them because this is, this is a sad, it's no good. Yeah, that is a handy dandy little um, thing that you can do is this transpose thing because it'll basically take any cell to column for data too, which is super duper useful. I do have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, so if we wanted to use this for building game modules or something yeah. along those lines, um, how or who would we cite for it? Oh, uh, I mean, I guess you could cite my name. That, that would be fine. But yeah, go ahead and use it. I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> this, is not, this is not amazing code. I, I'm not proud of this. <laughs> it's, it does what it needs to do. But yeah. Right. Yep. I know like my boss would be super sad at this algorithm because it's all brute force. Be like, what have you done? Like, you've done amazing things. I'm a designer. I designed it. It does what it needs to do. But yeah. Um, I also wanted to do the copy method instead of direct reference because you could have, instead of copying these things, just said this cell equals um, like, you know, this kind of thing. And you can kind of start to do it that way. Oh yeah. You have to march cell. Yeah. Shut up. Um, but then that wouldn't let you hand edit this either. So I decided copying over despite it being slower would be a better option for the end user because then they could move stuff around even by hand. It's like, no, I don't want that there. I can actually get rid of it or move it down here and then they can just mess with it directly here once it's generated out um, the full thing. Yeah, so just another thing to keep in mind. Um, if you want to apply these kinds of patterns on the, on the fills, um, which you would get from like going down to not there, um, fill. You can do patterns as well. Those you can't copy over. Um, so when you try to even do paste special and try to grab everything, it will not grab these fill lines. You have to apply those by hand um, here. So what you would need to do is one when you've copied it over, you would basically need to query um, what it was from the data, like was I placing dirt or grass or whatever, and then manually put the pattern in yourself while you're doing it, which is kind of lame, but it is what it is. Um, and that is just another one of those interior properties. So you would want to do something like, uh, let's break this again. Sheets. Oh God, Matt. La la la, cells, we're again referencing cells by row and column. And another gotcha to remember is that when you're doing this cell reference right here, um, it's row then column. But when you're doing addresses in here, it's column then row. Why they're different drives me bonkers because this is D4, but in here it's 4D. So just keep that in mind that they're actually reversed because good Lord, why make things easy? Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, the pattern. So we want that, and then we want to do interior, I believe, in my 
food is not doing the nice little thing from pattern and this interior, I can't spell interior, that pattern equals, and then there's a whole bunch of different um, pattern keywords like crisscross, like that one. And that would then apply that pattern to that cell, um, but it applied all the cells because we just did that. And there is, um, there is a document, Microsoft has a document with all the different patterns and like the different things. So it's just like, you know, uh, pattern gray 50 is another one you can apply. So that, that's, that's all you would have to do if you actually wanted to paste other kind of things in there. You have to do it by hand, which is kind of obnoxious, but it is what it is. Uh, I've only got five minutes left. Was there anything else peeps had a question about or why something is the way it is? Hmm. Cool. Thank you for coming. Hope there was something new that you learned about VBA or um, building Excel like style applications that do stuff and not just spit out numbers. Cause that, that's like, you know, the main is like, think of it really as like a really simple little IDE that you can build actual user forms and uh, tiny little applications in. Like I actually built a, um, a little app that would spit out where you should go eat lunch based on like who was present at the company. You would like actually put in like, you know, pick who was going to lunch and then it had a database storing all their preferences and how far things were anyway. Then actually let's say like, you should go to lunch here. Um, and then gave that to everybody at the company because people were taking 30 minutes to figure out where to go eat. So things that you could do like, you know, Visual Studio, think about, you know, it's just as easy to do it here using forms and buttons and all these kinds of things. And you can make it look pretty and then people want to use it. Cool. Um, I will be in Discord as much as I hate it for a while this afternoon, just hanging out. If you have any questions about anything, I'll be there. Um, otherwise, thank you for coming. Hope it was useful. I'm glad we got a not broken up version of the file up. Yay. I suck. Thank you. It was great. Yay. And you didn't have to watch me debug this year. Even better. <laughs> so boring. <Thank> <laughs>